welcome to Ren Rising and Visit Black Houston. We are celebrating the 25th anniversary of Sirius Sounds here in Houston on MLK. Oh, it is 25 year milestone. We want to celebrate Marquetta and Sirius Sounds. And speaking of 25 years or speaking of milestones, we have, we're joined here with Chrisette okay. Michelle. Launching her milestone tour. Sister, how are you doing? I'm wonderful, thank you. Oh, awesome, awesome. I'm so glad that you took, you're taking this time to spend with us. And, oh, I have to. Um, yeah, I have to. And Since you know, 10 years in the music industry, and I, you know, the fans have been overwhelmingly supportive. So we decided to take a promo tour around mm -hmm. the way that we used to do back in the day when I first got started 10 years ago, and just drive up and down the country and then sign every single CD. I mean, hug everybody who brought it. That's awesome. We were just outside, and, and you know, the, the energy that your fans bring as a sister. We would after she met you. She was outside, she was practically crying, so excited about the chance to just be in your company. So that's gotta be incredible. I heard you on the radio and you can feel your energy toward your um, that love you and support you. So uh, I understand that you know you really get into the quick of it. You don't like like blase questions. You want to go in. So you want to talk a little bit about politics. Whatever you want. Let's see what I know. But I, but I, but I will warn you that this is the most confusing time that I've experienced as an adult in the realm of politics. So, but you can ask more. Always be tell them when you are. No, I'm just telling you that. That's what I feel. Okay, okay, that's fair. So here we are, we have a brother of African descent who is about to step out of the presidency and is looking, it's a very good chance that we'll have a, a woman step into the presidency. How do you feel about that? The fact that they're a black and a female? Mm -hmm. I mean, a black man and a white house. Solely that he's black um, is a really big deal. Mm -hmm. um, as a country, I remember when he won the election, and my father, seven two, uh, sat in the couch and didn't say a word for like hours. Um, and just kind of sat there. We had set the oh, taking it all in. It's it, and and so as a young person who hadn't been through what he'd been through, my dad and hadn't seen the America that he saw. I didn't know why he wasn't jumping up and down like we were and screaming out like me and my mom. But for him, it was like, I've been through so much. I've paved the way for this moment. Um, and um, so, you know, seeing my dad experience that, and then seeing the way a millennial responded to it, it was just like, girl, we black, we out here. You know what I mean? Exactly. Um, it was an interesting response. Yeah. Good, good. So the idea that there's a female component, considering the things that we've gone through, you know, uh, there's a different perspective with her being um, of European descent and us being of African descent. But how do you, do you think that have a direct effect on us, or? Um, speaking to the specific need of um, women, mm -hmm. um, and, and nothing uh, yeah. straight uh, political, um, I think it's a really big deal for, for women who own businesses and all the little entrepreneurs that are, are, are thriving, and, and all the girls who uh, might be struggling to uh, rise above the men around them, per se. I think that this might give them some hope to know that every position is possible mm -hmm. for a woman. So, um, So I'm going to go to something really, really soft that I didn't want to hit you too hard. So what would you um, ask, what would you say, three things you want the public to know about you that nobody else knows? You do interviews all the time. You're doing this media tour. Three things that you want your people to know about you specifically something that's not out there. You know, after you do a reality TV show, you know, kind of a lot gets out there. And the truth is, is I've been doing music since I was eight. Uh, that's really what I've done my entire life. As soon as I graduated from college, I was on a tour bus for 10 years. Wow. Um, like, what, 100, 200 shows a year. So when I sit down, I might uh, you know, watch SpongeBob. So there's not too much deep uh, outside of what you guys are seeing. Uh, it's all in the music. Uh, people hurt me just the way that uh, they hurt other people. I wrote a song about that on my album called Stones, mm -hmm. where, I mean, people will say something in the comment section and not know that I'm affected. Um, so I'm affected is one thing that I love people to know. Yeah, um, another thing that I've uh, written about um, in this album is my attachment to people who I have been with before uh, my fiance. Um, I wrote a song to two other men on the same album. Um, one was sort of a farewell song, a goodbye song, and one was an I forgive you kind of song. And then of course there was one to my younger brother, uh, 
where we finally talk about uh, conquering the world together. Um, there's a great capacity for love when you open yourself up to it, and um, and there's room. It doesn't take anything away from your relationship with your, your, your man, your fiance, your husband. Uh, so that's something else that I thought might be a little bit fishy. Like, how can she sing songs to two other people? And um, and then uh, one thing that I hear people ask me about a lot is gospel music. I'm always being asked, when am I going to put out a gospel album? And for me, the the base of um, gospel is love, uh, so love your neighbor as yourself. And I think that I've written many songs that say that. Um, so I can sit on myself in so many ways. I'm a genre bending artist. Yeah, one, because we have a lot of songs. Yeah, those are the ones that I like. So I want to thank you, beloved. You've already taken the opportunity to share with uh, your and your uh, followers. Thank you. Good luck.